It's winning time. Welcome back, everybody. As we are breaking down this second season, talking episode five titled The Hamburger Hamlet, we see the aftermath of Magic Johnson's trade request, and we get a brand new chapter to the Lakers franchise, beginning with a new leader at the helm, and it is the start of showtime. We'll be discussing that and much more in today's spoiler recap, but before I share my thoughts on the episode, make sure to share yours in the comments below. How did you all feel the episode handled the situation between choosing Magic Johnson or Paul Westhead? And for those that weren't too familiar with the actual story, were you all surprised by the outcome? And just how crazy was that press conference scene? Let me know your pros and your cons in the episode, but also what was your favorite scene, your least favorite scene, and who were the MVPs or the MVP of this episode? Let's talk about that in the comments below. We got an episode to break down. Full spoilers ahead. So who's it going to be, Coach Westhead or Magic Johnson, as we open the episode with Dr. Buss getting bombarded with those questions from the media as we cut to earlier that day where the Lakers are leaving the Utah area after playing the Jazz, as Norm brings up the situation of Pat Riley asking him who's going to stay, the coach or the player, because right now the team just ain't big enough for the both of them. And speaking of the coach, Paul is legit living on planet Westhead right now as Pat is trying to warn him he should get ahead of this. He should be talking to management, trying to get his side of the story to them, but Paul assures Pat that Buss will either publicly punish Magic Johnson or just give him what he wants. Either way, he believes that they've won and also that this is going to blow over in just a couple days. Now, we see Paul is talking to the media. He's cool, calm, and collective, but he takes this opportunity to throw his star player under the bus as he tells the media that Magic Johnson was embarrassed and more importantly, that his star player has more growing up to do, which is to be true. He is only 20 years old. This is only his third year in the league. I get where he's coming from, but this isn't the thing you say to the media right now. You have to appear to be looking collected, not throwing each other under the bus. And speaking of bus, the fact that Paul thinks that Dr. Bus will be trading his number one draft pick, who, by the way, was a big reason they won game seven to win that championship a couple years ago. And also, he did win the finals MVP. He just gave him the biggest contract in sports history. So again, the confidence and the ego on Paul Westhead is insane. But I love the humble pie that he gets in these next few scenes as he hears this emergency meetings going on that Dr. Buss has called and clearly this is his first time hearing about this but a very interesting moment here and throughout this episode by the way we have Kareem saving his coach talking to the media and also as they're walking to the bus you'll notice Kareem tells the team that they appreciate their coach that they are really thankful of their coach as we have Magic Johnson walking on the bus he has a quick stare down on his coach and he looks at the camera and tells us he meant what he said. But just backtracking a little bit, again, addressing that Kareem of it all, not only in this scene, but throughout this episode, Kareem really did like Paul Westhead. And right now, as it stands, it appears that the team is standing behind the coach versus Magic Johnson. Cut to seeing Dr. Buss is pissed because he feels Magic Johnson stabbed him in the back with this recent trade request after giving him all that money for that new contract. Of course, we see Jerry West is pretty much in the camp that he told Dr. West about this, about how he felt that Westhead just wasn't the right coach for this team and that his time has run up. But Buss is still standing on that he's not going to be trading Magic Johnson, number one, but he's also not going to be firing his head coach. But he does want to talk to Magic and talk some sense into him. Before we get into these big meetings, we have this family meeting between Westhead and his wife and his daughter as he meets them at what I assume to be the Hamburger Hamlet, which is the title of this episode. He tells his family, just like he told the media, that everything's good, everything's going to blow over. But his daughter, she knows what's going on right now. She tells him that Magic Johnson has way more importance to the team than her father does. And then she proceeds to just flat out tell her dad, dad, you're going to get fired. And you notice from this scene on, this is where Paul, that whole planet that he was on, that ego that's just bigger than the world, it's deflating. You start to see Paul is starting to realize he's seeing the right on the wall that yes, like his daughter said, he's about to get fired. A cut to him going to the offices and trying to talk to Dr. Buss, which we see Dr. Buss' assistant tells him that he's not seeing anyone right now, meeting with someone, and she doesn't tell him who it is. Paul, again, is starting to get the hint as he's walking towards the other coaches and sees a board filled with other names for coaches to replace him. Again, reality is starting to set in for Paul Westhead. And before 
before we move on, I just need to know if there's anyone watching this right now. Did anyone feel bad for Paul West said? I just need to know. You know, right or wrong answers. For me personally, I don't feel bad at all. But hey, let me know if you were starting to feel bad for what's going to happen to Paul right now. But we have a meeting, or I should say a secret meeting going on with Magic and Buzz as Magic comes in the back door. He lets it all on the line. He tells Dr. Buzz that he feels that this whole partnership situation was just an act. And more importantly, he's his silent partner. I got to point out right now, the confidence on the actor Quincy Isaiah playing Magic Johnson in this scene, and he's been great this entire show, but this scene was just flawless in my opinion. We have this back and forth between two characters with Buzz bringing up Magic's father in the situation, and which was completely unprofessional in my opinion. But Magic doesn't back down. He throws in how Dr. Buzz has his family drama and he's sleeping around with all these women. Just the tension in this scene was just so well put together. I love the dynamic between these two actors. It's just so electric and so believable. As Buzz throws at him that he just made his 20 year old one of the richest people in sports and he treated him like a son. Again, Magic ain't hearing it. He speaks facts right now because he tells Dr. Buzz the truth. Money he got, he deserved it because he's not only the future of this franchise, he's clearly the best player on the current team. Again, the way Isaiah was playing into this scene just was so great. But before Magic walks out, Magic looks at Dr. Buzz and tells him why he didn't do anything when he approached him in last week's episode. Buzz, he has no words. But as Magic walks out, he tells him, I bet you hear me now. I'm telling y'all, that boy, he ate that scene up, y'all. Give a round of applause to Quincy Isaiah. He just was phenomenal in this scene. We cut to seeing Wes head, catching Magic as he was walking out. And instead of maybe taking this moment to be the bigger guy and maybe just say, I'm sorry how this all played out. No, nah, Paul Westhead instead gives him one of his BS Westhead special words of encouragement. He tells Magic that there's lessons in life that can be learned. But then he goes on to tell him no matter what happens, that he still believes in magic. I don't know how magic didn't, and again, I know this is a TV show and it was fictionalized, but I was surprised the show didn't take it to a level 1,000 and have magic either laugh in his face or just pop him upside the head, especially when magic gives him the response like, oh, oh, really? Ah, I love it so much. But see the actual meeting taking place between Dr. Buss and Paul Westhead as we see Paul immediately is suggesting that this should just be given a couple days, it's gonna blow over, and Dr. Buss immediately tells him after just talking to Magic and honestly being humbled and kind of sunned by Magic, he tells him that they're going to be letting Coach Westhead go. Now, Paul, he tries to scramble around, comes up with different reasons why this isn't the right move. Of all the reasons, the first thing he starts to bring up is yet again, Magic isn't the right player for this team. He shouldn't be leading this team. If you let him win, he's going to be running this franchise to the ground, blah, blah, blah. Paul, Focus on yourself, my man. I couldn't believe that he just continued to throw Magic under the bus. But speaking of bus, bus reminds him that he lost in the first round after winning that championship, which speaking of this championship, Paul brings it up that I won you all a championship. But again, bus doesn't break. As we have Paul kind of losing himself for a second, but he collects himself. He's a professional at this moment. He shakes the hand of the man that gave him this opportunity. And before Paul walks out of the office, he has one question for Dr. Buzz. Who's it gonna be? Before we move on to who Dr. Buzz picks, let's have a little sidebar. Now, for my sports fans, but in particularly my basketball fans, whether that's Los Angeles Lakers, Chicago Bulls, San Antonio Spurs, Boston Celtics, or more recently, the Golden State Warriors, what I'm getting at is when you have a successful NBA franchise that wins enough titles to be deemed a dynasty, where do you all stand on this position of the importance of that dynasty is all stems on a successful head coach with a great system that works for the team, rather that be Bill Jackson, Red, Pat Riley, Greg Palkovich, Steve Kerr, just to name a few, versus obviously having a great team first. You have to have a great team. But you also have to have a great franchise player, whether that is a Magic Johnson, a Kareem, a Berg, or Michael, a Kobe, a Shaq, a Pippen, a LeBron, you name it. Where do you all personally stand on the value? What do you value more as a fan? Having that successful genius head coach with a great system that works for the team or having that star once in a generational type A player? Where do you all stand? Now, to throw my hat in the ring, and I'll just use Phil Jackson for 
for example. Obviously, Michael Jordan, greatest player of all time for some people. Y'all know how I feel. Kobe Bryant's the GOAT, rest in peace. But Michael was killing, right? But he wasn't able to get over the hump with a great coach in Doug Collins. But then you have Phil Jackson that comes to the mix, and he's able to tap into the team in a different way than Doug Collins. And obviously, we know the history of what the Bulls were able to do. Same thing with more recently with the Golden State Warriors. They had a great up-and-coming coach with Mark Jackson, but he just wasn't able to tap into the team the same way that Steve Kerr was able to do. And obviously, we know the history with the Warriors. So I personally believe a dynasty is really, yes, you must have a great coach and a great system, but you also have to have those great players. And I think the players, I value having a personal great once in a lifetime type of player over having a system. And I'll just use this before I wrap up. Think of Greg Palkovich, who is considered to be one of the greatest coaches of all time in any sport. You look at his franchise players, whether it's David Robinson, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Manuel Ginobili, Kawhi Leonard. And you notice when his last big franchise player left the team in Kawhi Leonard, Spurs haven't been to the playoffs since he left. So again, that just points to my position that I think the players are just a little bit more valuable to a dynasty. But that's just my opinion. Let me know yours in the comments below. But as I digress, getting back into the discussion here, see the first person that comes to mind for Dr. Buss is the one and only Jerry West. As Dr. Buss believes that all signs point towards West being the new coach, and he even has Bill on his side, and he gets on his knees, he's begging, and he even throws in as a Hail Mary, do you really want the Boston Celtics to win another championship? So the question is, will Jerry West take the job? Because like Buss says, the Lakers need him right now. But cutting over to my man Pat Riley, who this is his big moment, as we get a brief flashback of young Pat watching his dad, who got fired after thinking that he was going to be be able to move up in his career that was a moment that stuck with pat throughout his life as he's talking to paul westhead right now pat's under the assumption that he's about to get fired he's about to meet with the management in a little bit but we have a really nice scene here between pat and paul as we see paul is apologizing to all the bad mistakes that he made and he didn't really value the advice that pat riley was giving him they have a bit of a laugh and we see pat is just a stand-up guy right now because he could just be you got me fired f you screw you, this, that, and the third, but instead, Pat Riley shakes his man hand, and he goes an extra step further, and he thanks him for giving him that shot. Again, it's a small, short scene, but I really did appreciate their brotherhood that they had between season one and also in season two. They had their ups, but they also had their downs, but I really enjoyed that scene, and it just kind of encapsulates their friendship that they built over these last few seasons with winning the championship, but also getting booted out of the first round. Let me tell y'all something right now. The genius, and I mean genius shot that we have. Pat is feeling like he's about to lose his job. He's about to miss his opportunity. We see that he slicks his hair back with some water as we start to get the classic look of Pat Riley. And that was 100% foreshadowing to what's about to happen later in this episode. I love this little scene here. As he's ready to think he's about to get canned, only for Bill and Wes to grab him to go see Dr. Buzz. As Pat is being told that he's what's about to happen is going to happen in front of the press and he doesn't want to get embarrassed, only to learn that it's his time to be the coach. But is he going to be the head coach full time or is it just a temporary position? As ladies and gentlemen, this actually happened. We go to the press conference where we see Dr. Buss announces that he's fired Paul Westhead. Then he gets really crazy here. He's just winging it at this point. He announces that Jerry West will be the offensive coach and Pat Riley will stay on as a coach, but not the actual coach. And rightfully so, the questions start to come in from the media because right now this is a crazy situation. Like I had mentioned, Dr. Buss is just going on a whim right now as the media is asking him, who's going to pick the lineup? Who's going to pick the plays? Who are we going to talk to at the end of the games? As Dr. Buss looks at them and says, you know what? Those are some great questions. Let me go ahead and have Jerry West answer those. This scene to me was not only hilarious, but it was just so chaotic and I just loved every second. This is to me my favorite scene of this episode because it just goes to show you and again, this happened in reality and it just speaks to the idea of great players great coaches synergy having their moment to shine the fact that they went through all this craziness and still managed to become the showtime lakers and the dynasty they built it's just a brilliant scene and i love it so much but jerry west right now he's having some ptsd as he's recalling all the times that he was the head coach for the lakers between 1976 and 1979 and by the way his record was respect 
respectively won 145 games, but he also lost 101 games, but he did make the playoffs from all three seasons that he coached, and even one of the years, I believe it was the 1977, they made it to the Western Conference Finals that year. So he, he had some success, but at the end of the day, Jerry West didn't want to be a head coach. As Wes is on the mic, he makes it very clear to the media that he will be working for Pat Riley and that Pat Riley will be the man in charge as the man of the hour steps up to the mic. And I love the shot where he's looking at Paul from the distance. We see Pat brings up how crazy of a day this has been, but he also, again, another example of him being a stand-up guy, he mentions that he lost a friend, right? We know that Paul West said lost his job and then he drops a bar on the media. Sometimes it takes a left hook to get you going and he believes that that left hook landed I love that line the hair is even mentioned in the press conference this scene was just executed perfectly I have no notes I have no cons it's just a perfect chain of events in my opinion and it was just executed with perfection but the big question at hand is, what does this all mean for Magic? As we cut to the next day, S will support Pat on the bench. If he needs him, he'll give him some advice. But other than that, Pat Riley is a coach. And we cut to just literally seconds later, we see Jerry West yelling at the players, giving the players some wisdom, some advice. I was just, I love Jerry West so much in the show. Jason Clark is just so great in the role. But I appreciate the small details and the great acting. We'll admit, as far as like a little criticism, I do wish the show would have took a little moments and maybe have one or two scenes showing Paul going back home to his family and just having these moments of reflection and kind of missing the moments that he messed up on and the mistakes that led to this moment or maybe having Pat Riley going home telling his wife the good news or showing just a brief shot of maybe Magic Johnson watching this shit show on television with this press conference and maybe him having a smile on his face and really capturing what just went down. I just wish that they would have had a little moment of the press conference. But again, just a little, little nitpick there. But we see Coach Riley puts a smile on Magic's face after he tells them that they're going to put the system aside. That's no more. It's time to play freely. Wing it. Have fun, as this is the start of the Showtime Lakers. But the crowd, unfortunately, isn't on board right now because they still got some hate for Magic. They're booing him when they're on the court, but that didn't stop the Lakers from beating the Spurs 136-116. to as we get this brief montage of all the various different fans sharing their opinion on Magic Johnson, how they feel like he's a spoiled player, they should never let that coach go, and also love the line when a lady says that, oh yeah, Magic's got some magic all right, his magic trick is he makes coaches disappear. I thought that was such a funny and hilarious line, but right now, Los Angeles are hating the Lakers as Dr. Buss gets into this brief argument with Honey as his name is being brought up in a paper by the legendary 14 time sports writer of the year 12 of them winning consecutively Jim Murray calls him a disgrace as we see Dr. Buss apologizes for raising his voice at Honey and they have a little bit of an emotional scene I'm not gonna lie I don't want to sound like a broken record at this point but I just wish that that moment would have been more impactful and had more of an emotional punch because to me it just kind of felt flat and it's not that they don't have chemistry it's just as I've mentioned in previous reviews the relationship right now and the Dr. Buss drama just isn't my favorite plot going on but let's put that aside and get to some drama here with some of the key players and the the owner of the team as there's a couple date night out as we see Kareem is salty about Buzz firing his coach and it took me a moment to really kind of realize that yes there was a relationship built last season as well as this season with Kareem and Paul Westhead. There was enough of a established relationship to kind of understand where Kareem was coming from. You see Buzz takes this opportunity and tries to work his magic. He calls Kareem the father of the team. He wants wants to make him a very rich player. He wants to give him access to the forum and make more money for him, but Kareem ain't no rookie. Kareem ain't magic. He doesn't just want money. He doesn't just see the dollar signs. He's a smart, savvy player at this point in his career. And he points out the short-sightedness of magic taking that deal as he points out how it's just going to just even out in five years. It's not going to be a really great deal. But this is where Kareem doesn't let back. He tells Dr. Buss that the real problem why he didn't re-up because of Dr. Buss's ego, his selfishness. It's tough right now, right? The Lakers just can't catch a win. They fire their coach. To get a new coach, their franchise player is happy again, but now they're veteran, they're OG, and Kareem isn't happy. So again, it just goes to show you, it took a lot of magic for the Lakers to become a dynasty. 
Now we get a brief scene between Honey asking Jeannie to take it easy on her father because all the stuff he has going on with the team. They have like a bit of a moment where it seems that Jeannie kind of understands the situation and she's kind of accepting Honey at this point. Again, I don't want to continue to repeat myself, but every time we cut to the scene, I just think of, oh, it's halftime. Let me go to the bathroom. Let me get something to drink. I just don't care about that plot. But again, it wasn't heavily involved in this episode, so I can't complain too much. But as we get to some more things here. I feel like this is the first time this season that we actually have a scene between Jeannie and Magic Johnson. As we see, Magic is now kind of questioning how he handles the situation with her father. And we see Jeannie tells him that she looks up to him because he stood up to her dad and she appreciates that. And she calls him her hero and they have a bit of a moment there. And I just, I miss those moments between Jeannie and Magic because if you all know the real life relationship, they were very close. So I love those little moments between those two characters. The Lakers lose three out of their last four games and the decision of firing Paul and replacing him with Pat isn't working. Pat isn't getting the respect from the players. We cut to the scene between the meeting of Dr. Buss and Pat Riley. Bill wants Buss to make the decision to just cut Pat Riley, but Dr. Buss is sick of all this stuff. He wants stability and he wants something permanent. He gives a simple question to Pat, do you want to coach his team? And of course, Pat says yes, but unfortunately they lose their next two games. And the losing doesn't stop there because they lose the next 10 of their next 20 games and then things are just looking hopeless right now as the players are treating Pat Riley like a substitute teacher. But Pat, he's had enough, man. He finally speaks up. He hits the drawing board. He's calling out all the players with their flaws and all their bickering and the complaining about other players. He talks about Kareem. He talks about Magic. And if you want to win, you have to be tight and moving forward. If anyone on this team has beef with one another, speak to that person face to face and then he throws in a little fourth quarter hail mary oh yeah rambus you'll be in the starting lineup now this is the moment where pat riley becomes pat riley but also the los angeles lakers become the showtime lakers we wrap up this episode with the Lakers officially going 57-25 to end the season, the top seed in the Western Conference. And of course, Pat Riley is now officially the head coach of the Lakers. And also, Magic Johnson is happy right now. As the headlines are reading, will they beat the Boston Celtics? see Dr. Buss marries Honey, which again will be interesting to see where this plot actually goes. And the hope for the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Boston Celtics doesn't happen because the 76ers beat the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals, meaning that the Sixers will be facing Lakers yet again. And we have this moment, which is just so fantastic as the Boston Celtics chants. And as the Los Angeles Lakers, I've heard this chant so many times. And we get a fantastic moment to end this amazing episode as the Lakers look at the camera and they have a message for the Boston fans. I feel like I've been saying this for the last few weeks, but this is my favorite episode of the season so far. What amazing performances. Quincy scene with Dr. Buss was fantastic. As I mentioned, that press conference scene was fantastic. Adrian Brody having Pat Riley transform into the Pat Riley that we know and love. So many excellent moments. Again, if I were to nitpick, I wish there was maybe one or two scenes with Paul talking to his family, having Pat Riley be happy, talking to his wife, having Magic Johnson watching that press conference like that's just my only nitpick and again y'all know how I feel about the honey and the genie and the Dr. Buzz family drama that's just one of my least favorite things of the show right now but everything else was just excellent performances direction pacing just showing the drama that went on behind the scenes was just perfectly executed I've been talking for a while now as y'all can see I love this episode but it is now time for you all to join the comments what did you think Pros, cons, favorite moments, least favorite moments. Who were your MVPs? I'm going to throw out Pat Riley, played by Adrian Brody, and Quincy Isaiah as Magic were my MVPs of this episode. But let me know your thoughts. Who was your MVPs? All that stuff in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching today's breakdown. Before we all wrap up the video, if you could do me a favor, hit the thumbs up, share this video, leave your thoughts in the comments, and of course, consider subscribing to the channel. You all are great. Hope you're staying safe. Come and join the community by subscribing to the channel. Check out all my other reviews that I've done for the show so far, just in case you missed them. Check out my most recent review, and I'll catch you all on the next breakdown.